What is up everyone, long time no see and I've been pretty busy myself in the last couple of weeks and I'm going to show you why I was busy. It's also related to, to this project that I'm currently, currently seeing. But I want to share with you in this video an interesting problem that I think you might find it insightful, which is basically I'm having a data race in this project. And the way that I solved it was using optimistic concurrency control. So if you're not familiar with how to solve this kind of problems and with optimistic concurrency control, I'm going to share with you my thought process and my solution on this problem. So let's go here to the diagram because I think it's easier to show you. And I'm going to give you some more context in just a bit. But before we go there, I just want to show you the error and what uh, is the problem. So here I have my project that I'm working on, which is a Goofer Social API. And I have this endpoint that I expose, which is a patch to a post. So basically what this means is that you can update a post by ID, right? And this is roughly how a post looks like in my database. So this is the post data schema, which has an ID, a title, a content, and a user ID and tags. Now, let's imagine that we have two users, user A and user B. Both of them are going to make a request at approximately the same time. So it's going to be very close. And this is where the problem starts to, to come in. So let's consider that user A is going to send this payload with a new title. So he's going to just update the title. And then we have user B, which is going to update the content itself and not the title, just the contents. Now, what might happen if we are unlucky is that when both of these requests come into our API, what's going to happen is that one of these is going to get discarded. And so this is what I mean by a data race. So let's imagine that this is going to be discarded and at the end, only this content update is going to be considered. And why is this happening? I'm going to show you more in a bit, uh, more in depth in, in the code examples. But basically the gist and what you need to know is that whenever a request comes in into a Go HTTP server, a new Go routine is created. So for each request, a new Go routine is created. So this is the start of the problem and of course, it's nice that we can have the, this asynchronous process, so it's going to be concurrent for any, a, any request, which is nice. But we also need to consider when we have a lot of traffic coming in, this situation might happen. And what's happening behind the scenes is that when request comes in, we're going to fetch the post. So because wants to fetch a post to see if this post exists, and then we're going to update it and send it to the database. Now, the problem here happens when the second request comes in and also fetches the same post. So the post here, let's say that this is going to be um, with this data structure. So this is the current post data um, structure that we currently have in our database. So we're going to fetch this on both requests, on both A and user B. And user A is going to update it, so it's going to work. So what's going to happen is that this is going to look like a um, new title. But when user B comes in, he's going to still have the same old title. So he's going to st still have uh, some title and some content. When he's going to update it, he's going to update the content and it's going to post everything in. So what's going to happen is that at the end, this is going to be reverted to some title because that was what it's what was stored. And then we're going to have the new content updated. So as you can see, the title was discarded because it was overwritten by the second requests. And just in a bit, I'm going to show you a script that I wrote that is going to simulate this happening because this usually is a pain in the ass to debug and to make it happen unless you have a lot of traffic. Even then, uh, it might not happen. So I wrote a script which has a really high chance of making this happening with GoRoutines and all of that. So but before that, I just want to show you and give you some context on what is this project, because it's also the reason I've been busy lately. And the culprit is this guy right here, the backend engineering guide with Go. So the microservices course that you guys might have watched received a lot of good feedback and everyone seems to like it. But the plan all along was to create a different course that was interconnected with the microservices. So they go hands to hands and this one that I'm working on is a deep dive into backend engineering with Go. So we're going to build a RESTful API from scratch from TCP and it's already being released. So I'm currently releasing every module every week. So two to three modules every week. Uh, this is 
just inside the school community. So if you are interested, you can always check it out. But when it's fully complete, I'll probably announce it here on the YouTube channel. But for now, I don't want to give it too much attention. Uh, and I also have made these mini guides that a lot of people seem to like it. So if you're interested, you can always hop in and you get access to all of this. Um, and hence why the Goofer social application, because this is a project that we're going to be building there from zero. We're going to start from a TCP server until we deploy a docker image to the clouds. And this is one of the problems we'll find there. Now, going back to the code, this is a, a script that I quickly wrote, which basically does is it updates the post with the ID 13. So I have this post already created on my database. And then I'm going to simulate two users, the user A and B, from updating the post concurrently. So the first user is going to update the title with this information. And then the second one is going to update the content with this. And at the end, what you're going to end up with is there's a chance for one of these requests being discarded. And basically inside this function, what you're doing is that we're just doing an HTTP request to the API and all of that. So let me just make sure I have it running, which I don't. And then let's run this script. As you can see, we got 200, so everything might be working, but in reality, it might not. And by the way, sorry if the font is too small. I have no idea how to increase it on this editor, uh, but I'll try to zoom it in. And as you can see, whenever I just patched the post again, you can see that the contents is updated from the user V, but the title is still the old one, so it was discarded. So we got this at the first try. As you can see, this is actually... Um, not that rare to happen. So that's a good thing to show you, but not a good thing to have. And how did we solve this? And all starts from here on the updates post handler. So this is the HTTP handle func method for that function. And what happens here is that we get the post from the context. So here I have built a middleware, which basically just fetches. It's a reusable way to fetch the posts on uh, multiple endpoints. So for the, the, the updates and the delete, we're going to consume this middleware, which just gets the post ID from the URL and then fetches it by ID from the database. And this is where the problem starts. Why? Because as you saw on the diagram, everything started when we fetched the post at the same time. So both of them have the old data, or in this case, it's the most recent one. But when the first request comes in and updates it, it's going to be fine but the second one is going to use that old data to update it and it's not going to it's going to basically discard the old one so this is what's happening here and even though we're doing this it's still going to be a problem and here we have the update method for the stores for the repository so we have all of these separators nicely and when is it it's here the update so just update the post set the title the content id now, of course, this is a minimalistic example and you could even might solve this in a different way. But I just want to show you that if you're working on a really update heavy application, you might not have any other chance of solving this. You might do it with locking. But then again, if you want to have it performance, this is not going to solve it because the solution I'm going for, which is optimistic concurrency control, is a concurrency management method that assumes that conflicts between transactions are rare and they are not that rare if you have a lot of traffic, as you see from that script, which just ran at the first time and it worked. And then this is going to basically allow transactions to proceed without locking or blocking. And this is why I want to go with this. If you have a heavy traffic application with updates, then locking or blocking might make the application less performance. And just before commuting, and this is how it works, and this is what I'm going to show you the implementation, the solution is which is before committing the transaction on the database layer, the optimistic concurrency control checks for conflicts and rollbacks and discards it if any are found. And this approach enhances scalability and performance by reducing locking and enabling applications to serve multiple users simultaneously. So this is what I'm going for. And by the way, if you want to read more about optimistic concurrency control versus pessimistic, I really like this article here. I'm going to leave in the description below. So if you want to go ahead, you can read it at your own pace and learn more about it. Now, the solution for this problem basically is adding a version column into our table. What's going to mean is that we're going to have here a new column called version, and this is going to be an integer of the version. So it could be version one, version two. What's happening here? So let's go back to the form. Let's assume that the version is currently um, version two. So someone already updated. And whenever we fetch this post, I'm going to actually add it here. I think it's cleaner. So this is the initial state. 
Now let's consider the first user is going to update the title. So it's going to be new title. It's going to work out. The version is going to be incremented to three. But the thing is, the points that the user B fetched, it's still version two. So he's going to try to commit this. So he's going to come here. This is going to be still some title, but he's going to update to new contents. And this is going to be version two. And what's going to happen is that on our database layer, this is going to be discarded because we're going to do a check of if the version that is currently stored is equal to the version that we're currently sending and in this case they are different hence we're going to discard them and the user is going to be notified with an error we could even return to the user either a 404 or it could even return better a 409 conflict i think this is the the status code for it if i'm not mistaken and this is basically how the optimistic regression control is going to work so going back to the code, let's then implement this solution and it's going to be pretty simple. So the first thing I have already made is that I have created a set of migrations, which is going to first add the version column to the table. And then I have also here a down, which is going to revert it back. Pretty simple. And then the core of the solution is here on the update. So what we're going to do is that we're going to filter by ID and as well as the version. So I'm filtering if the version is going to be equal to the one we're sending. So what I need to do here is actually change this to be um, query contexts, uh, query row contexts. It doesn't return rows information, but we can scan it, which I'm going to scan it into the posts dot version because we are going to also update it here so we're going to set the title the contents and we're also going to update the version otherwise this wouldn't uh, work right there we go now we need to also pass in the version into the last arguments right here so if all of this sounds confusing to you then i would really recommend you maybe checking out the full backend engineering guide in go where we're going to build all of these projects in more detail there but let's go back here to the update post handler because I think here we don't need to do anything, we don't. But I have also added the version whenever we fetch the post by ID. This is important, otherwise the version is going to be zero every time. So let's run the project again. And what we should see is that this data here, and actually let me just revert this to the old value, so some content and some title. What we should see is that one of the requests is going to throw an error and the other one is going to update successfully if there is a conflict. And one thing I was forgetting is to actually return here the version. So again, I'm using Postgres and we can do this. We can just returning the version from these updates. And then what we need to do if we want to check for an error, and this is optional, if you want to omit, we can do it. But I like to be explicit on my, uh, on my APIs. So here we check if the error is no rows, meaning that no rows were affected, because then again, we're doing this check. And if there's no rows, I'm going to return one of the errors that I have created here, which basically just returns resource was not found. So if we save this, we should have everything working now. And I'm going to run the script and let's see if we can see this happening. So as you can see at first time, <laughs> we're getting lucky here, but we got a 200 request and then we have got a 500. Now I'm having a 500 because I'm not handling the error here. So if I want, I could just do that switch again here and then return either a 404 or even a 409. I think that would be most appropriate. But just to show you that this fails, um, I'm just I'm not doing that. Okay. And if we check the logs, you can see that we are logging this error and this is the resource not found. So I can always see that something is happening. Now going back to the database, let's refetch. And as you can see, the title was updated, but the contents was not. But we know that the title was not updated. The, the content was not updated, sorry, because we throw an error. So the user is going to know that something happened and he can retry again. And the version was updated again. So if you rerun this again, let's see what's happening. Actually, both worked now. So there was no data race this time. And you can see that everything was updated. And again, the version was updated two times. So guys, this is pretty much it, what I wanted to show you. And hopefully you found this insightful and you got something from this. And I see you on the next one.